Welcome to Interparty Conflict, the podcast where we answer your questions so you can have the best tabletop gaming experience possible. My name is Gabe. And my name is Jeff. And we are going to answer your questions today. But first, I have a question for you, Jeff. Uh huh. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I've yeah. Been- <laughs> You were going a little bit energetic, so I figured I'd, Sorry, I'd, I'm I'd go the other way. Try to just change it up a little bit, <laughs> you know. Um, doing uh, doing all right. Um, cool. Doing pretty good. My my eyes been twitching for like I want to say two weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. I mean, it's it's just I'm not getting enough sleep. Have and... you been watching too many games on Twitch? I uh, see what I did there. Well, yeah, no, I, I spent a lot of time on the computer, like looking at a computer screen. Yeah. I don't get enough sleep. I drink caffeine. Like it's, I mean, it's nothing. I'm not worried about it. It's just annoying. Yeah. It's just, just, just like just throughout the day, just like twitch, twitch, twitch. And I'm like, dang it. I'm sorry to hear that. That's nah, fine. I mean, other, other than that, I'm doing all right. Cool. Like, you know, not, not, not much to complain about there. Yeah. So we, um, uh, we just recorded our bonus episode for our Patreon uh, bonus episode for this month, mm-hmm. and so that should be that should be out um, before this because we're we are still recording a bit close to when the episode's going out. But uh, sure, um, yeah. So that that should be out if you are a five dollar or more patron. You should go listen to that. We did another. Uh, we actually did two of those parsley games, the little yeah. like text adventure things. Yeah, and I think those went pretty well. Yeah, I I did I did, I did okay. Yeah, I, I, you, did, I, you did really good. I feel like I could have done better. Eh, but but. I enjoyed them. Well, so. yeah, I, I had a lot of fun running it, and I yeah. hopefully people will have fun listening to it. Yeah, that was a good time. I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing. Uh, we've been uh, Griffin. And I've been doing. Um, we've been playing uh, Dark Souls three for a little while, mm-hmm. and then actually I got Steven on the action. On yeah, friend, yeah, on yeah. Friend that's quest. Really cool. uh, and and that's been a blast playing with Steve because you know Steve Steve knows the game pretty well, or mm-hmm. and he plays um, he plays a, a caster. Sure. Which is what I've been running, so he's kind of like showing his me his character's the ropes. name is Soul Spear, right, which is yeah. the spell that he uses, yeah. almost exclusively because it's a great spell. It's a great spell, yeah. Um, but I have been thinking about doing because uh, a little while back I did a I I just recorded recorded myself playing uh, King's Quest Five. Oh yeah, and I kind of want to go back and start doing more uh, point and click adventures and stuff. Okay, like, I just run those by myself because they're kind of like slower pace and stuff sure, like that. Sure. So I might I might do more of those later. Cool. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Um, I also want to mention that I, uh, I've been, I've been really getting behind with my fi- fantasy fiction. Um, I, I still have not. I, I put a thing on the Patreon a few days ago saying that uh, this month's pain- fantasy fiction was going to be late. Like it is. It is now March, and I still haven't gotten February story out yet. Um, I've just the last few weeks I've been so busy, Jeff. Mm. It has been insane. Like I was sick for a while, and then yeah. Uh, how to work overtime at work. I've got this class that I'm that I'm doing. The class actually, my final is on the day that this episode goes out. But then the following week, I start another class mm. on Mondays instead of Tuesdays. So we're gonna have to figure out what we're doing with our recording schedule around then. But anyway, so in in a few months, I'll be done with classes. But for the time being, it's basically an extra night out of the week that I just don't have. Right. Yeah. And like this yeah. this week, I had to work overtime, so I basically. I have tonight. That's the only. That's really the only time I have a full day off, the whole week. Oh, geez. So, but whatever. Hopefully, at the end, it will mean I will be making a lot more money and have a lot more free time. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. But we'll we'll worry about that if and when it happens. Um, but anyway, hopefully, but I've I've written the story for for February. I've written it, and I got some feedback from Steve. I'm gonna do some probably some hefty edits edits between now and when it actually goes out. But hopefully, by the time this episode goes out. The short story will be out itself. Cool. Um, so, yeah, if you are a patron, be sure to check out the short stories. I think that the short stories I write are, generally speaking, very, very good. Mm. I mean, you know, of course, it's I'm the one who, write the, who <laughs> writes them. And, of course, I want to promote my own work. But also, I think that, like, especially with Steve's help editing it, yeah. um, it's I just I think it turns out really good. Cool. So, yeah. So th- that should be out by the time this ep- episode goes out, if not very, very soon after. And I'm going to try to get a jump start on next month's or sorry on March's fantasy fiction as well. Cause I, I hate that. Like I, I started releasing them like a few days later every month and then a few days later and then a few days later, I really don't want to get stuck in that habit. So sure, yeah. I do not want it to be typical for it to come out a few days into the following month. Right. So I, I'm going to try to get a head start on the, 
head start on the next one. So anyway, I, I do want to say just again, tons of activity on the discord. The discord yeah. has been Booming. bumping the last few days. Mm-hmm. It has been awesome. It's been popping off as the kids say. It, it really has. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, if you have not joined our discord, join our discord, you can find the link on Facebook. You can find the link on our subreddit on r slash interparty conflict. If you can't find it there, send us an email, send us a whatever, and we'll we'll get you the link. Yeah, yeah. It's it's free to everybody. Everybody can join. We we've got some great discussion going on on there. Yeah, for sure. So so yeah, come and uh, and join in. You want to go ahead and jump into the episode, Jeff? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jeff. Uh huh. Eyes blinking, you emerge into a large chamber with a high vaulted ceiling. (laughs) A huge dragon is here, slumbering atop a pile of glittering treasure. Mm. What do you do? Um, uh, I'm going (laughs) to... You can do all the things that you would have done in the game. Right. (laughs) Um, let Let me look at the treasure. You see burlap sacks bursting with gold coins, a king's ransom of precious gems, rings, and jewelry, and a gleaming sword forged of the finest steel. Ooh. Um, let me examine the, the jewels, though. You find an especially beautiful diamond ring. The gem is enormous. Ooh. Hmm. You know what? Oh, let's... Uh... Let's just, let's just talk with that dragon. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, the let's dragon, see what he's doing. The dragon wakes up, eyes you hungrily, and roars, Another mortal dares challenge me? Choose a weapon, wits or steel. Um, I'm going to choose steel, and I, and, I, and I die for the, for the sword. Uh, the dragon bats the sword aside and burns you alive with dragon's fire. Oh, dang end. it. <laughs> So you died. I'm dying. Do you want to load up your save game? Yeah, yeah. Let me, lo- okay. let me load up again. Eyes blinking, you emerge in a large chamber with a high vaulted ceiling. All right, a all right. A huge right, dragon. Right. Is- <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> what do you do? I, I, uh, I, t- I talk to the dragon again. The dragon wakes up, eyes you hungrily and roars, another mortal dares challenge me? Choose a weapon, wits or steel. A uh, wits. Excellent. Answer my riddle correctly or be burned alive and eaten. Are you ready? Yes. Who owns nothing yet has everything? Um, is is it a is it a smartman? A, a smartman? A smartman? You know, one who smarts. <laughs> one so, who knows all the smarts. So, so you might say a wise man. Yeah, a wise man. The dragon laughs. Well done. You succeeded where all others have failed. Now choose your reward from the dragon's horde. <laughs> Oh, it rhymed. Uh, that was un- that was unintentional. That's but, good. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. So um, that was actually <laughs> I that we did this little text adventure thing earlier, and that was actually taken straight from the book. Yeah, that, so, was, that was pretty Jeff good. had already gone through that. So. Yeah. Well, uh, we otherwise, across- he would have died a few more times. I think. <laughs> yeah. When we came across it, we're like, oh my god, that's perfect. <laughs> right. So yeah. Um. So so today's item was submitted by Prozino via email, and uh, I actually. Because in the in the game there was a sword that you could have taken. Um, I wanted I wanted this one to be this week's item to be a sword. Sure. As well. So uh, so the this this is actually it's not actually one sword. It is a a line of swords. Okay. So these are called the dragon rapiers. Rumors spread that some thieves and assassins can move so fast they can produce a sword out of thin air. With deadly speed, a rapier appears, cuts down his victim, and vanishes in an instant. Ooh. The dragon rapiers are made of dragon silk. Hmm. This silk takes on the properties of the dragon scale used to make them. These silk bands wrap around the wearer's wrist and extend to become a rapier. These rapiers are as strong as any other, but are as indestructible as dragon scale. Hmm. So what this item is, is a ribbon that has been like spun from dragon scale. Right. And then you have the ribbon wrapped around your hand or uh, or whatever, and then you can spend a bonus action to turn that ribbon into a sword. Mm-hmm. So it like appears to come out of nowhere. Yeah. Or you can turn it back into the ribbon. When it's in ribbon form, it has a special ability you can use. But when you turn it into the rapier, the rapier has, it's it's a magical rapier of, of, uh, of a, a different type, depending on what type of, dragon scale was used to make it gotcha um so so yeah when it's in rapier form you can't use the 
spell that the ra- the ribbon can use when it's in the ribbon form. You can't attack with it and so on. Gotcha. Uh, all the spells are cast as an action. The attuned wearer must make a spell attack. Spell attack bonus is dexterity modifier and proficiency bonus. And the DC is 10 plus your proficiency bonus. Hmm. So it deviates a little bit from how spells usually work. Uh, so there are five different variations. The white, black, green, blue, and red. So each of the five chromatic dragons. Mm-hmm. I imagine uh, somebody might even be able to make a... Uh, Metallic versions. Metallic versions yeah. as well. So uh, the white ribbon uh, works as follows. As an action, the attuned wearer can cast a 10-foot cone of frost, dealing 1d8 plus proficiency bonus frost damage. Oh, cool. So when it is in ribbon form, you just uh, you just spend an action, and you can shoot a blast of ice, does a d8 plus something damage. Gotcha. Uh, the black ribbon is similar. As an action, the attuned wearer can cast a 10-foot spray of acid, dealing 1d8 plus proficiency bonus acid damage. I assume spray is just like a line then? That's a good... I, well, I, the... I assumed it to mean just a single target. Oh, okay. Um, that's actually a good question, though. Well, oh, just... because the cone was a cone. The cone was a cone, and then I know the black black dragons, I think, ha- are a line of acid. Yeah, I, okay, okay. Good point. I would say then, yes, a line of acid. Mm. The green ribbon... Is a it func- functions as a plus one rapier when it is uh, in rapier form. Uh-huh. As an action, the attuned wearer can cast a fifteen foot cone of poison, dealing two d eight plus proficiency bonus poison damage. Nice. And affected creatures succeed on a Constitution saving throw of a DC DC equal to ten plus proficiency bonus, okay, uh, or become poisoned. So they they take the poison condition. I think usually poisons do something while you are. Uh, Poisoned. I, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into. Yeah, the yeah it's like you, you, you're taking disadvantage on like attacks or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, something like that. Uh, then the blue ribbon is functions as a plus one rapier. Yeah, you're and also then, you also get first place. Good job with the blue good job, ribbon. Job. Yes, uh, as an action, the attuned wearer can cast a 15 foot line of lightning, dealing 2d8 plus proficiency bonus lightning damage. This line can pass through creatures or conductive objects dealing the original damage. Oh. So, like, if you're behind a metal wall, Ooh. you could, like, basically shoot through the wall. Nice. Or something. That's cool. That's, that's kind of cool. And then the red ribbon is a plus two rapier. Understandable, because red is the best color. Uh, uh-huh. uh, functions as a plus two rapier. Also, as an action, the attuned wearer can cast a 20-foot cone of fire, dealing 3d8 plus proficiency bonus fire damage. As a bonus action, the wearer can rotate up to 10 feet... Moving the cone with them and dealing the same damage to any creatures or objects in the new affected area. Ooh. All objects not being carried in the cone's effect catch fire. Oh, man. So, yeah, uh, that red one, that red one's uh, no joke. Yeah, so it's like a 20-foot cone, but then you can... What, what, you can rotate. Like, rotate, I guess. So it's instead of being... Up to it's 10 tw- feet. So I can sort of understand that because if it, something is a 20-foot cone, it is 20 feet long and 20 feet wide at its farthest point okay so you're, so you're like it's 20 foot and then 30 i guess yeah yeah, yeah. it's prob- okay. probably why they would uh specify so, okay that so yeah so if you if you spend a bonus action you widen the cone basically yeah gotcha yeah okay that's cool. pretty cool yeah and then then prosno gave a couple of small little tips or ideas in addition white and black ribbons are more common and red robins are, red ribbons are more rare mm. understandable because the white and black ones are weaker the red ones more expensive yeah. more more vet, more powerful and then add bonuses to the white and black ribbons, because at the moment they are not magical weapons. They're just rapiers. Uh, it also says slowed speed for the white and 1d4 recurring acid damage each round for the black. Mm. So if you wanted to boost those up a little bit, make the white and black ones plus one yeah. and or make it so that if you get hit by the cone of frost, you are slowed. Mm. And if you get hit by the uh, line of acid, you take recurring damage. Right. It's like the acid, the rounds after. The acid like sticks to you and yeah. burns you. Cool. I think this is pretty cool. I think there's a lot of of neat variety. I think this could make a really cool like collection of yeah. of weapons to put in your campaign. Heck, maybe there's a group of dragon hunters mm-hmm. that have killed dragons and each of them wields one of these. Sure. As like a you know a trophy of their uh, of their victory. Right. You, you find you find one and you come across another dragon and they're like insulted by it. Or there, you like there you go. There you go. Could be, yeah, could be well known, uh, a well known type of weapon among the dragon ooh, community. Ooh. Or a dragon hires you to go find one of these and destroy it. Ooh, okay. There you go. But you're, you know, you're also tempted to just keep it anyway. Maybe. Why maybe. Yeah. Dra- yeah. We 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 destroyed it. <laughs> right. 
uh, I'm, no, this this ribbon in my hair, I just I normally wear that. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, it's relatively simple. I think, you know, there's a, a bunch of variety, but uh, as far as how it actually works, I think it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. So, yeah, um, I think that'll do it for this one. That Once again, that was the Dragon Rapiers submitted by Prozano via email. So thank you, Pro- thank you, Prozano. Yeah. And Jeff, if anybody else wanted to submit a magic item for the Dragon's Horde, or if they had questions for us to discuss, or stories for the funeral pyre, how would they get those to us? They can send us an email at interpartyconflict at gmail.com, or they can come join us on our Discord. Yes, they can. Where we have uh, we have places for you to submit any one of those things. Yep. Um, so, yeah, come join us on there. Again, you can find the, the link to that on our Facebook as well as our subreddit. There you go. All right. And uh, as always, we have a giveaway mm-hmm. to give away today. We are giving away a copy of Chapel on the Cliffs, courtesy of Goblin Stone. And Goblin Stone is an adventure creator. They've got several things on DMs Guild. They make lots of great products. And uh, yeah, they've given us copies of this to give out to our listeners. So Jeff, today, who is our winner? Our winner this week is Kelly L. Whoa, 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 winner. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Yes, congratulations, Kelly L. Who you sh- has sent us a picture of a dog? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Amazing. A dog in front of a bunch of dice. <gasps> Wait, yeah, zoom in. Oh, my God. Oh, look at the little dog. <laughs> yeah, there's a little dog and a little bunch of dice. Aw. Yeah, that's a, it's a cute picture. <laughs> Head poking up there. Yeah, so um, so yeah, you should be getting that pretty soon, uh, Kelly. Be sure to let Goblin Stone know what you think. And uh, check your spam folder if you haven't gotten it in a few days. And if you still haven't gotten it, contact us. So, yeah, Jeff, if anybody wanted to enter this drawing, mm-hmm. how would they do so? Uh, they could send us an email, um, mm-hmm. in, but you want to put the subject line as Chapel on the Cliffs. Yep, Chapel uh, on the Cliffs. And sorry, what was our email address? Uh, it's interpartyconflict mm-hmm. at GeoCities. It's no. not, not at GeoCities. Uh, it's, at, it's at gmail.com. Yep. I do want to stress, we are running incredibly low on applicants. Oh, yeah. Like, if you want a free adventure... <laughs> just just email us. I almost guarantee you you will win very soon. Right, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, it's not it's not a uh, tough competition at this point. But yes, yes. I mean, you know, it's it's a, it's an adventure. There's a chapel, it's on yeah, a cliff. It's, it's a very spooky. very good adventure. It is spooky. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Actually, I read it while I was at work, like since I have a smartphone, like I can I can browse it while oh, I'm right. at work and look at it for ideas and stuff. Nice. Yeah, interpartyconflict at gmail.com, chapel on the cliffs in the subject line. Enter this drawing. Get your friends to enter this drawing. Mm-hmm. It's super easy, free adventure. Yeah. And it's a good adventure too. Yeah. So yeah, That's enter this drawing. I want to tell you guys that this is this episode is brought to you by our patrons. Mm-hmm. If you go to patreon.com slash interpartyconflict, you can see what we've got on there. Patreon is a platform where you can pledge to donate to a content creator of your choice. If you pledge with us, the lowest tier has fantasy fiction that I write every month. Mm. Every month, hopefully. <laughs> I, I do seriously apologize for not getting last month's out uh, during the actual month. I'm going to blame the fact that February is the shortest month of the year. Sure. Maybe maybe that works. Uh, but anyway, I will. <laughs> That's part of it. Yeah. But normally I get a fantasy fiction, a short story out every month. We have outtakes for everybody. For a higher tier, we've got our monthly p- bonus podcast, Interpatron Conflict, uh-huh. which we uh, we just recorded the episode for this month. And uh, we also have a monthly Roll20 game, which this month I can pretty confidently say we're going to be playing the Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 <laughs> RPG again. <laughs> so I expect that to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that was pretty good. And also, if you are in the highest tier, I will write about your character for mm. the fantasy fiction. So yeah. So yeah, some great stuff on there. If you think any of that sounds good, head over to patreon.com slash interpartyconflict and uh, consider donating. Yes, please. And hey, if you can't donate, just tell a friend. Yep. Tell a friend about us. Leave us a review on iTunes. Even just the fact that you listen to us is great, but uh, hey, if you if you want to help spread the word, that would make everything even better. Uh, I actually had there was somebody on the Discord who was saying that uh, he was trying to get his players uh, to to listen to us, mm-hmm. and I was like, you should bribe them with magic items. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so there just you go. Tell your tell your players if you if you, if they listen to us that they they can get some uh, some sweet some sweet <laughs> loot on the sure. next uh, adventure. All right. And then uh, just quick before we get to questions, I want to tell everybody to go check out Crit Academy at critacademy.com. 
Justin, Ian, and Brandon create new and reusable content for players and DMs alike. They recently did an episode about a DMs Guild supplement that details making mechs uh, uh, in D&D. Like and they range in size. Suits. Well, they range in size from either like exosuits uh-huh. to straight up like Gundams. Okay. And yeah. All right. So like <laughs> just listening to that episode was amazing. It's bon- it so sounds bonkers. It does sound bonkers. So go <laughs> go check them out. They also, they wrote a book for, uh, that's on DMs Guild that I helped write. Mm-hmm. And that's on there. If you just go to CritAcademy.com, it's like, boom, right there on the front page. They're right. advertising the heck out of that thing. Yeah. It's their uh, Unearthed Tips and Tricks book. It's got tons of tips on there for uh, character concepts. They've got encounter concepts, monster variants, player tips, DM tips, magic items, all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a great deal. It's $10 for the PDF, and you get like, I want to say it's like 80 pages or something like that. Yeah. Um, so much con- content in there. And yeah, I definitely think everybody should go get that. Also, check out D&D Character Lab, Garen and Dan make characters every week and then pit them against each other to debate whose character is better. Mm -hmm. And then uh, brute force and ignorance is an actual play podcast on the network as well. So they're great. All these podcasts are great. Go check them all out. Enough of that. Let's get into some questions. Yeah. All right. This first question comes from TB and this is through email. How do you explain your passion for D and D to people who are closest to you, but who just don't get it. And they uh, go on to say like that their family just can't wrap their heads around why they spend so much time engaging with imaginary characters and places. Yeah. Uh, this is a great question. Have they ever read a book? <laughs> well, th- there you go. Right. Um, this is a great question. And this came in very recently, but I like, I push this to the front of the list. Cause like, this is, this is definitely something that I want. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about. Yeah. D and D has been a part of my life for almost half of my life. Not quite half of my life, mm. but you know, I've been playing D and D in some form or another, some form of role playing game reliably since I would say, I think it was like 2002 or 2003. Mm -hmm. And there, there have been times where I've thought like, you know, I I go without playing for a while. Like when I moved to Tennessee, I didn't really have any friends. Like I didn't play any D and D or even really talk D and D or anything for a long time. But I would always think to myself, like I'll be playing it again. You know, there's, I will, it will never not be a part of my life. And sure. Yeah. And I am a person where my wife does not understand it at all. Yeah. yeah. Anytime we're doing anything remotely nerdy, she yeah. just screams at us that we're nerds <laughs> and just kind of is just like, I don't understand any of this. And whenever, Which... <laughs> whenever like I play D&D and then I come home or whatever, she always asks me the same question. Did you win? <laughs> right. And most of the time I'm the, the person running the game. So... Technically, yes. Well, I mean, technically, no, no because I guess. all yeah. of the things that I was playing died. Right. <laughs> generally speaking. But, you know, but all I mean, of your I plans mean, have been thwarted, basically. But I always answer yes, because the important thing, the goal of the game is for everybody to have a good time. That's true. So, and you, so as you, far as I tell, everybody had a good time. So, so yeah, yes, you, I won. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot to this. But, Jeff, yeah, I think you, you hit the nail on the head in that. Have you ever read a book? Right. And when reading a book, have you ever wished, I wish there was more to this. Mm -hmm. I wish I could do more. I wish I could be a part of this story. Yeah. I wish during, you know, Harry Potter's second year at Hogwarts, I wish I could have done, if I was Harry, I would have done this. Right. Or if I was one of Harry's friends, I would have wanted to be there when he was fighting, you know, the the basilisk at the end of the book or whatever. Right. Or it's like, you want to know more about what, you know, Hagrid does in his spare time or something. (laughs) Exactly. Sure, sure. Or if you're like, I would love to to be the person who puts that kind of a story together. Mm -hmm. I would love to create the story of Harry Potter or something like it, but in a way that my friends can take part in it yeah. and everybody can add their own little thing. If you've ever felt that, if you ever wanted to just like have more of this story that you love, mm. that's what D and D is. That's what role playing games are. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it explained it time and time again. It's, it's cooperative storytelling. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, so you're, you're creating, you're basically creating and telling a story, but through cooperation between DM and players and, You know, and so on. like And and the dice, I guess. And especially with Dungeons and Dragons, as opposed to just RPGs in general, Mm -hmm. a lot of the time, these sorts of games have quite a bit of rules. So you're you're playing them through, you know, a lens of like a whole bunch of rules and mechanics and such. But 
Think of it like, let's say you're a person who loves reading your stories and you also love playing chess. Sure. That's what (laughs) D&D is. It is the story part of telling a story, an Mm. interactive story that everybody can be a part of. And also the tactics and the mechanics and the the thinking ahead of your opponent and such of playing a game like chess. It's all that mixed together. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you like if you like chess or or if you're like a lawyer and you're really into like rules and stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, well, because the tactics and the mechanics aren't just in combat. Right. Also knowing how how things work and how to to, you know, negotiate with the rest of the party in order sure. to get them to yes. go with you and do what you're trying to do and so on. So yeah, there's a bit of like uh, like a debate sort of thing in mm-hmm, there, mm-hmm. you know. There's like I, there's I mean, I wouldn't say there's something for everybody, but there you know. can be though. Yeah. Because role playing games in general can be whatever the group wants them right. to be. As long as you find the right group, I think there is something for yeah. everyone. I mean, other than like physical activity, like actual physical activity. Sure. Although, sure. although there have been a couple of times where I feel like we've done some sort of physical like task or something, maybe. Sometimes, especially with like the challenge of champions, right, like putting the paper things. bags on your feet <laughs> yeah. and such. Which isn't much, but it's something. It's know? something, yeah. 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 Are, and we, we might be getting to doing physical stuff in relation to role playing games a little later. Yeah. But uh but yeah. Uh it's yeah, so like I mean spending a lot of time because it like arguably like we we do spend like a you know playing D D takes a long time. It does, yeah. And like with a book, you can pick it up, read it for an hour, put it down. You sure. Know? Like maybe you won't, you might not touch it for a day, you know, or you might, you know, you pick it up, you read it for a couple hours or like an hour before bedtime. And like, you'll, you know, you only read it before bed for like an hour or so. D and D it's like, okay, we started at, we, we, you know, we started at noon and we're ending at noon the next day. <laughs> sure. You know, yeah. Like, I mean, not in all cases, but some, sometimes like games can go for a very long time. Yeah. Well, because the, the difference with between a book in d d is that a book is a solo activity. Yeah. You can pick it up whenever you want. You yep. can put it down whenever you want. But for better and for worse, Dungeons & Dragons or just general role-playing games are group activities. Yeah. So they, they are social events. Right. Not, not only are they – like they're – in addition to being, you know, the the – the fantasy storytelling stuff. Yeah. So, so you're like comparing it to going out for an evening to socialize with people. Like you spend several hours at a party or at the bar or something like that, you know? So, but like imagine combining the social activity of a party, but with like the, uh, you know, like with the sort of the creative wonder of reading a book. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so like you're, you're, you're telling the story at a party, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but everybody else gets to cho- like to chime in on the story and, you know, and, and try to help decide what happens next. Sure. And then um, if you play video games, then it's if, sorry, if the person you're trying to explain it to plays video games as well. That's a lot easier. That's a, it's a lot easier to explain because you could say, you know, pick whatever video game they like to play. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you love to be a part of that world? And wouldn't you love to do things that are not programmed into the game? Right. Yeah. There's so many like, they, like, I, like, it's like, I, why can't we go into that area? It's like, well, you just can't access that area. Sorry, there's an invisible wall there. You can't yeah. go through it. Yeah. In D&D, if there's an invisible wall, well, shoot, you can go find like the magic key or whatever that opens up that invisible right, wall. Yeah. Or you can there's get a, a high level wizard to teleport you to the other side of that wall. Yeah. You cast a counter spell to get rid of the, to get rid of the wall. And there you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> but like in, if there's in, an invisible wall that DM like. Might not want you to get there, but sure, you're going to sure. try your dang your dang hardest to get <laughs> you, over there. You have the option at least. Yeah. And it's, yeah. <laughs> but like, let's say you're playing like a, I don't know, a Final Fantasy game or something like that, or like a Pokemon game. And mm-hmm. you go up and you talk to the person at the shop and they say, oh, welcome to the shop. And then they just have the list of things you can buy pops up. What if you wanted to talk to that person and find out where they get their shipments from? Right. And then offer to help defend the shipment from bandits or something like from that. From Team Rocket, obviously. But well, I'm, yes, yes. In in the video game, in Pokemon, you can't do that unless that's part of the game already. Right. You can't join Team Rocket. There you go. You could totally join Team Rocket if it, if it was a, if it was like a D and D style style. Exactly. Game. Exactly. Uh, there's like. In one of the in one of the Pokemon games, you like dress up as a, a member of Team Rocket, and people are always like, "Man, like, why can't you just join Team Rocket?" <laughs> I know. Well, in, in uh, Pokemon Let's Go, you can get a Team Rocket outfit. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh cool. Um, so that's probably the the best way to explain it is like yeah. it it's like reading a story, but you get to 
write the story too. Yeah. It's like writing a story, but you're getting input from other people who are playing through it at the same time. Yeah, they're playing characters in the story. Exactly. You know. So it's not going to just be, well, I just sit down and write a story. It's going to be, we're going to find out what this story is. Mm-hmm. We are all going to write this story. None of us is going to know everything that's going to happen. It's going to be exciting because we can all explore it together. Yeah, it's it's a super hobby. Like it's so it many, it's so many things in one. Because like yeah, it's it's like a game of chess, but it's also like writing a story. It's also mm-hmm. like reading a story. It's also like watching a movie. It's also like playing a video game. It's you know, it's it's got so many you know elements of other like you know recreational hobbies and stuff like that all in one. Yeah. You know, which is why, like, it's, you know, it's hard to coordinate because you need to get all of everybody in, in, you know, in in the same schedule and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. It Mm -hmm. takes a long time because, like, one, you don't, you know, you know, you're only going to get together once a week or month or whatever. Sure. And there's just so much to it. Um, Because, yeah, it's it's like having a game night or something like that where all your friends come over and play board games. You're not going to do that every day. Yeah. You're probably going to do that maybe a couple times a month. But when you do it, it's going to be it's going to be a blast. Yeah, exactly. And as far as, like, why someone would want to spend so much time engaged with imaginary characters and places. Again, think of, like, if you if you write a story, if you write a short story, or or let's let's make something a little bit, uh, a little bit more abstract. Let's say you're, you draw a picture of a character. Okay. You're like, I have a cool idea for this person that I think, in my head, they're a fun person to hang out with. And they're goofy and they tell jokes and so on. So mm. you draw a picture of that character. You can put that picture of the character on the wall. And every time you see it, yeah, okay, cool. It's that picture. I, it's that character I drew. Oh, yeah, I think I remember what that character's personality is like in my head. Yeah. Imagine if instead some one of your friends looked at that picture and they were like, hey, I'm going to improvise a scene with that character. And so not only do you have that picture to remember, you have... The scene to remember, you remember how that character acted and you have an association of that character with a friend that you have a good time hanging out with. Mm. So it's not only the character that, yes, is imaginary, but it's got real world elements to it because an actual person breathed sure. life into that character. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. You're not spending, you're not sitting in a room alone in a room playing pretend with, with imaginary characters. Exactly. You're, you know. It's also performance, you yeah. know, it's, it's also performance in some way. Like, you know, not everybody's great at the role playing, which we've touched on many a times. Sure. Um, but like, uh, you know, it's like you're, you're still, you're interacting socially with other people. So like you are like, these things are happening with real people, mm-hmm. you know? So like, yeah, it's, it's not, I don't know. Like, I, yeah, like there's, there's the whole image of like a bunch of people is sitting in a basement, you know, being all antisocial. When sure. Sure. You're, like D and D is such a social activity. Yeah, yeah. It's a very social game. Like that's, it's like, ha- it's a, that's at least half of the game. It's a social activity that is welcoming to people who are bad at social activities. Yeah. So it can bring them out of their shell. It can get people who don't normally, mm hang out and talk with friends to hang out and talk with friends. Right. Gets them out of the house and into somebody else's house. <laughs> right. <laughs> and sure, there is the stereotype of, oh, everybody who plays D&D are really creepy. But would you rather that person... <laughs> who says that? No. I mean, pe- people say that. Would you rather Lisa. those those socially awkward, <laughs> creepy people be sitting in their basement like, I don't know, looking at like anime chicks on the internet? <laughs> or would you rather them get out into a real place and interact with actual people and hopefully improve on their skills and become less creepy of a person right and then they could just look at the anime chicks on their phone well i mean i suppose (laughs) i guess what i'm trying to say is that like like getting people into a social situation is good Mm -hmm. it's good to get people involved with other people yeah and you know if someone is antisocial, the best way to get them social is to Get them to interact with other people. Right. Yes, they may be playing a fantasy game with elves and wizards, mm. but that's better than them sitting in a room by themselves, not interacting with people. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's a social activity. It's fun. It's creative. Mm-hmm. It's something that you can put as much or as little into it as you want to. Yeah. And if you have the, a good group of people, it's inviting to everybody and it's fun for everybody. And it's just, it's great. Yeah. And I feel like there's a certain amount of like skill development too involved. Cause it's just like, well, just learning, reading and learning rules, even mm-hmm. if they're not like, you know, uh, 
even if they're not like relevant to like somebody's career or something, like they're not going to, they're not going to get you a better job in, you know, directly, but sure. like learning how to like look through a book and, you know, you know, take notes or, you know, to look at charts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot mm-hmm. of things that like, you know, to me doing that right now is this is, that's just part of my hobby. But like as a younger, as a younger kid, I would have, uh, I've been learning like skills on how to like basically on how to like read and write and learn things. You sure. Know? There's, sure. I, I feel like there's some practical, you know, I've, use coming, coming out of like playing D and D or games like it. Yeah. So two, two things I've heard. Number one of people sneaking D and D onto their resume, not calling it D and D, but saying like, well, Oh, sure. Every, yeah. every two weeks for the last year, I've been in charge of getting a team of people together and working out problem solving issues. And, uh, you know, exploring creativity and, and so on yeah, and so on. Yeah. That is as 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 weird as it would feel putting D and D at the top of that. Yeah, those are actual skills that you are actually working on. Right. Yeah. You could you <laughs> you you're scheduling people together. So yeah, you, you're you're doing like a team management there. Uh huh. You know? Uh huh. You're uh you know you're creating and 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 uh, you know assisting people in problem solving and things yeah, like absolutely. That. Like yeah, it's definitely. Like the, these are definitely like team building exercises, like things that you do in D and D. Yeah. And then the second thing is that I have heard of people teaching their kids how to read through D and D. Sure. Yeah. Teaching them to read, teaching them like basic math, you know, like young, young kids. Yeah. So we, you know, we sort of talked about, uh, um, getting kids into the game. You're probably going to be not quite playing the full game of D and D with a young child, right. but you can still use it as something that they are interested in mm-hmm. and their interest is going to drive them to learn how to do these these things that will serve them for the rest of their lives. Ooh, like grammar and verbiage are really important. Like being able, being able to understand what you're reading and not just read mm-hmm. it because like I still will like be pouring over, you know, or o- over the rules trying to figure out what does this exactly mean? And I usually yeah. have to go to like the sage advice thing to say, and like, sure, sure. And they'll, they'll give their, their, you know, recommendation. I'm just like, I still don't think that's right. <laughs> you know, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to really argue with them and, and, you know, debate it. I just like, well, it could be read this way. It's like where it's it's a game of where's the comma sort of right, thing, you right. Know? So like learning how to read where the comma is, like wh- you that know, can be helpful. That can be very helpful. Like you know, so you know, I mean, we've kind of just been talking about just the general uh, yeah. general benefits of D and D. But as far as like, if someone, if Lisa, my wife, walked up to me and just said like, what's wh- the point? <laughs> what's the point of D and D? Why do you like playing D and D? I would just take it as imagine any story that you have enjoyed so much that you wanted there to be more and there wasn't more. Yeah. If there could be more, you can make more through D&D. Mm-hmm. You can take you can take a more active part in it. You can go directions that the story wouldn't have otherwise gone. I know I talk about them a lot, but the film reroll is a perfect example of that because they take the stories of movies mm-hmm. but through the power of role-playing games the players as the characters in the movie explore things the movie never would have gone to. Mm. And that's so cool. You can do that with anything. Maybe not necessarily with D&D because D&D is very, you know, fantasy. It's kind of its own thing. Yeah. But if you adapt it or you use a different RPG, you can make a role-playing game out of literally anything. Mm -hmm. And that kind of brings us to our next question uh, from Nathan. Yes. This was on email. Uh, have you ever considered a fanfic D and D game where it's set in an existing universe, like a Wheel of Time or a Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. Uh, would you use D and D, or would you rather use a system specific to that world? So, being yep. able to adapt—I mean, we've sort of touched on we have. adaptations a little bit. Um, but I I have wanted to. There have been some times where I've taken like fairy tales and such. I, I know mm-hmm. I did a I did like a Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. thing i don't think that's exactly what they're talking about but right well something more that has a more fleshed out uh like lore to it so like yeah yeah if it was like a like a harry potter or like a, a game of thrones one where like game of thrones in game of thrones there is magic mm-hmm. it's not it's not quite it's it's not quite as prevalent in the in the show and in the books okay like there's definitely magic and like but the, the whole idea is that like Magic has kind of been gone and dead for a while, yeah. but now that like the dragons are back, the magic's kind of coming back too. So like it, you know, little bits here and there. Um, and then like again in like uh, things like Lord of the Rings, like there, it wasn't like 
there was magic, but there wasn't like a ton of it. Like yeah, Gandalf, the highest level spell he ever cast is like level two or something. Right. Yeah. So it's like there, there's like, there's like little bits of magic here and there, and then like there's 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 like big things that happen in that, but they're more like environmental or they're like more like you know happened thousands of years ago. Kind yeah. Of things. So if I was if I was trying to make a fan fiction D and D game, I would kind of try to analyze the world like like what you're saying. I'm trying to figure out. Is there magic? Is there magic items? Yeah. Is there, you know, a lot, the, a lot of the stuff that makes up like the economy of D and D? I would try and get as close of an analog as possible. Yeah, because like if you're if you're gonna use D and D, like it, if you're gonna have to change a lot of rules, it might it might be better to find something that's closer. Yeah, honestly, what I would do if I was um, trying to do a specific specific property mm. regardless of what that property is i would probably try it first with something with a, a, a role-playing system that is incredibly simple sure the terrible rpg always comes to my mind as like <laughs> if i just want to try the simplest rpg i can think of that's what i would do i would just tell everybody okay you're gonna be in the world of i don't know the simpsons mm-hmm. or something give your character things like six skills that a simpsons type character would have Sure. And then I would try to run a game in the Simpsons world using that. If that went well, maybe then I would start looking into other RPGs that have more rules to them that might fit a more a bit more of that specific world. I feel like the uh, Paul Blart uh, Mall Clap 2 one is good. like if you change the the things that you're changing for well, your picking yeah. for your characters. Like- I was I was going to mention that but the because the mechanics of that game are incredibly simple. It's yeah. roll a d roll a d ten twelve no, twelve roll a d twelve. If you get a seven or higher, you succeed. Right. But part of character creation is you choose from a specific list of like traits. Yeah. And stuff. So I suppose changing that you would just change it to a list of traits that are relevant to the world that you're yeah. setting it in, or something like that. Yeah. So instead of hit a hit an old lady, you have like <laughs> has yep. the ring of power. Instead something. of old banana, you have works the power plant, or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. So so I would I would start off with something incredibly simple, mm. see how it goes, and then switch to something that is a bit more rules heavy that fits the the system. Yeah. The the system that they use for uh, the film re-roll is GURPS, which is meant to be a generic universal role-playing system. That's what yeah. it stands for. And so in that, there's rules for just about everything. You know, you might have to dip into some source books and such for some of the stuff. Mm. But they've done such a variety. They did Frozen in an early episode mm. because there were rules on giving a character ice powers. One <laughs> of their first episodes was uh, Back to the Future because there are rules on time paradoxes. They did... Friday the 13th, and I think for that, they actually implement... They made some of their own rules, but when they did it, they implemented, like... Because they he, they tried to to pass it off as a... They tried to trick the players into thinking it was, like, a romantic comedy. So they implemented, <laughs> like, love mechanics okay, for it. Yeah. But GURPS is a system that is very generic, and the more you want to look into it, the more stuff you'll find. Mm. So that's one, but, th- but that is a lot more rules-heavy and, you know, getting players to buy into that is going to take more time and and so on. So I would start as simple as possible and then work my way up. If the if the TV show or movie or whatever had its own uh rule set, like I'm pretty sure Game of Thrones does have a role playing game. I'm 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 quite positive there If is. it's not like Lord of the Rings has one, I know there's a couple Firefly based right, ones. Right, yeah. I would probably for something like Lord of the Rings, I'm sure there's probably several Probably, uh, probably, you know, several different ways to play a game based yeah. on it. If if there is an official or several official games for the property in question, I would probably start with that. Yeah. Just because you're all, all the the stuff's already going to be there. Mm. You know what I mean? You're not going to have to. Yes, you'll probably have to learn a bunch of rules, but they're all going to be rules in favor of getting across the feeling that you want to get across. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because like the Game of Thrones one might be much more like about. You know the warring families, and you know, like, or, sure, like sure. or trying to trying to win the throne or something like that, which sounds more like a game of Risk or something. <laughs> I mean, kind of. I'm, um, I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a Risk board that's actually the. Uh, you know what? I know there is. I'm pretty sure I've seen. Oh, I it. guarantee you, there's a, a Game of Thrones Risk board out there. I think somewhere. I've seen it before. I think I've physically seen it. Oh, well. yeah. Um, so, in response to the the specific questions, have you ever considered a fanfic D and D game? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have. Um, I'm, I can't really think of many examples because I don't usually, I haven't really taken any of them very far. 
Um, I, I've toyed around it with, with like little bits of maybe like running a Final Fantasy themed RPG or like a Pokemon themed RPG. I've never really taken them very far because I usually find someone else has done most of the work for me. Right. And it's usually not quite what I'm looking for. And at that point, I'm like, well, maybe maybe I'll, I'll be better off just doing something else instead. Mm. So uh, I've never taken it very far, but I have I've considered it. Definitely. Sure. Absolutely. And then I would probably not use D&D unless it was very close to D&D to begin with. Sure. Yeah. Like yeah. I could see myself. Just playing a Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings game in the D and D rule set, right? But that's because I'm not super invested in either of those. If I was, I would probably take the time to actually learn how to play. Sure, those specific RPGs. Yeah, and if it was something new, I would just try something as as simple as possible, just to get get my foot in the door, get the players' foot feet in the door, and then move up as as need be. Yeah. Our next question is from Seth Real on Reddit. Which is nerdier, LARPing or D&D? Why? Yeah, so we're throwing down the gauntlet here. Um, <laughs> and we uh, we have not discussed our answers to this beforehand. No, no, we haven't. Um, should we do like what we did on Dinner Party Conflict oh, and you know, well, say it at the same time? I mean, I have the feeling we'll say the same thing, well, but I thought we were going to say the same thing I, well, with the hot dogs. I th- <laughs> <laughs> well, because I thought I had a solid answer for this, but I don't. Well, that yeah, that's the thing. The more I think about this, the more... I mean, I, I always joke... I guess, should I just say which one I would say is the answer? Sure. I The joke is always that LARPing is the nerdiest thing you can possibly do. Right. That being said, I cannot come up with a good concrete reason why. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, it is it is sort of the thing where it's like, yeah, LARPing is like the step up in nerdiness. Like, yeah, I play D&D, but at least I don't LARP. LARP. Am I right, right guys? Yeah. Like live action role play. Right. I mean, like, and it depends on what you consider LAR- LARPing. Sure. Because like. There is the one where it's more just, and I don't know if it, that's actually considered large action role playing, but there there is like it's basically just a sport where you're hitting each other with foam swords. Yeah, because I mean I did do that for maybe a year or so when yeah. we lived in Tennessee. I didn't really, I didn't get super into it. I had mm. friends that did, yeah. and I I never, nor did any of my friends ever really get into like the role playing of it. Yeah, it was basically just hey, let's go play around sword fighting right which is more like it's more like live action like war gaming yeah yeah then then you know then role playing they they when we first met these people these friends they described it as uh as like reenactments of sure fantasy stuff that's yeah yeah like that's sort you that know does seem I like mean, it's, it's, it's like civil war reenactments or whatever in in practice it is very similar so you know those weird people who dress up as civil war veteran or, or, or uh you know civil war uh people and yeah <laughs> we're well we're gonna take it one step further and do like make believe stuff sure uh, I, I guess let me answer this question in the way that i think makes the most sense which looks nerdier <laughs> larping or dnd in that case <laughs> larping absolutely which one actually is nerdier? I don't think there is an answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think that sounds about right. Because I mean, it depends the, depends on the D and D group. Because if they're I going s- full like wearing cloaks okay, with candles, good, you good know, good point, good point. I think, which at that point, that's technically live action role playing in a way. Uh, I suppose you're... the argument could be made that LARPing is less nerdy because not only are you socially interacting with because because whenever people say D and D is nerdy. And I feel the need to to uh, engage with that. Mm-hmm. I always try to start off by saying, like, it's a social activity you're doing with your friends. What's nerdy about getting together with your friends and doing a social activity that requires everyone to yeah. participate? You know, if that's nerdy, then fantasy football is just as nerdy. I think we've even talked about yeah. that in the past. Ner- I think nerdy just is is a thing that other people are into that you aren't. Yeah, like yeah. You know, that is a, a nerd is somebody who's into something that you aren't into and and or don't understand. Sure, sure. Like, but the argument can be made that LARPing is less nerdy because not only are you in, engaging in a social activity, uh-huh. it's a strenuous physical activity yeah. too. If you were in like a group of friends that oh yeah every week we go jogging, yeah, nobody would say that's nerdy, right? But this is even more physically intensive than that. Yeah. Yes, but- you're doing something that is like fantasy based yeah. and so on sometimes depending on your group people wear costumes or whatever yeah there's but there's like there's rules there's you know, there's like, rules there's running it's a competition <laughs> you gotta, most of the time at least it's a competition yeah 
it's yeah, it's competitive. It requires points in some way. Requires strength. It requires coordination. It requires endurance. Yeah. All these things that stereotypical nerds don't have. And dexterity and <laughs> constitution. You need the wisdom to, yep, to yep. <laughs> see what's around you. All right, good point. Good point, Jeff. And you need so the intelligence for the tactics. So and knowing all the rules. By I see I feel like by any sort of actual reasonable metric, mm. LARPing should be less nerdy. Sure. But if you are a person and you are walking <laughs> down the street and you see a bunch of people with swords and shields, some of which are in like cardboard armor or whatever, hitting each other, you're going to be like, that is the nerdiest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I never want to associate with those people in my entire <laughs> life. When we moved to Tennessee, because we met these people because every Sunday they would be at the park that was immediately behind our apartment. Mm-hmm. When we first moved there. There were times where we would just drive around the park and laugh at the people uh, doing this film sword fighting. I'm not proud of it, especially because I, because I later became friends with these very people. And then I was one of those people. You, you see a car with like like a doppelganger. <laughs> yes. You laughing at yourself. A time vortex shows up just to show myself laughing at myself. <laughs> so it's not fair, of course, to mm. say that those are the nerdiest things ever. But that's how it's going to look. Mm. Whereas that same person seeing some people sitting in a basement around a table might also say those people are nerdy. I feel to me, based on my own sensibilities and my own past, Mm. I would probably say, yes, that's nerdy, but at least they're not LARPing. Right. You know what I mean? I think even on our subreddit in the little sidebar, I think there is even a joke about about how nerdy LARPing is. And I feel (laughs) bad, but I don't actually mean it. Right, yeah. It is just the joke. You know, I yeah. mean, no ill will whatsoever towards anybody that LARPs or anybody that does foam sword fighting or right. anything or anybody that plays D&D or any other role playing game. Mm. Really, like, we're all in this together. We're <laughs> all having we're all just here to have fun, use our imaginations and make friends. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, there there was there was one time I did some form of LARPing, and, but, but it was <laughs> Jeff, what the heck? Come on. Well, it was more of like we more did like a capture the flag sort of thing. Yeah. It was with uh it was with Jeff. Oh yeah, the other Jeff. Yeah, other yes, Jeff. I, for a moment I was like, like what are, Jeff, what are you doing? Who, who, no, no, yeah, yeah. We uh we both have a, a mutual no, friend no, named Jeff. I'm not Jeff, I'm J Dog. <laughs> you know, uh um he was my roommate for about a year, I think, right. uh shortly out of out of high school. Yeah, so like and, I would, uh, it was like we did like a capture the flag thing in the woods. Mm-hmm. But we were using like swords. He seems like the person that would that would do that. <laughs> he was, <laughs> and I don't I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm saying like <laughs> he, yeah, yeah, no, but it totally like, totally sounds like yeah. him. And it was a pretty good time. Like you know, it was it was it was a little odd because I think it was it, it was I was like it was like in, when I was still in high school. I think okay, or was I still in high school? Yeah, I was still in high school. Hmm. Anyway, but right. there's just awkward time. Never mind. Sure. We, don't, we don't need to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there really, there isn't one that's nerdier than the other. Mm. But I do think that by appearances only, LARPing is nerdier. Yeah. But, uh, but n- being nerdy is not a bad thing. <laughs> you do you. Right. That's all I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that'll do it for our uh, regular questions for this week, but we still have our social media discussion questions. Last week's social media question was alcohol before or during a gaming session, yay or nay? Yeah. And I said, I said probably not before Yeah, because if you're going to be drinking before the game, you're probably gonna be drinking during the game. And by the end of the game, it's all bets are off. Yeah. It's not, it, nobody's going to be following rules at that point. There's going to be a lot of shouting. Yeah. Or somebody's going to be asleep. I mean, sure. like, you know, I used to, I used to, when I, when I was younger and drank, I would get crazy, but now it's like, I just take a nap. Yeah. So, um, I don't drink. So, um, so, so, so nay so for nay. me, I mean, but I, I'm not saying I would, I wouldn't be against anybody who did because I would trust that whoever did was knows themselves. They know their own, uh, right. Yeah. Know your limits, endurance, yeah. you know, their own limits and such. So, um, so I, I don't think I would have any problem with it unless it became a problem. Right. I yeah. Guess. I would not be if I went to if I started a new group, if I joined a new group and people in the group were drinking, I wouldn't be like, bah, 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 how, bah, how, how dare you? How dare? No, no, not at all. Um, I so, say. So we did get a we got a bunch of responses. I don't think I'll be reading uh, all of them because there there are a lot of them. But um, everyone's a drunk. <laughs> uh, 
Craig H on Facebook says the sessions my players have loved most were when I was drunk. Oh God. I understand <laughs> this is probably not best for everybody, but I think it can work. I will also say it, if it was an every time thing, it would probably be taxed. Sure. Sure. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's social lubricant, you know, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, like I, I feel like if I've had like a drink, sure. sure. I get, I get, a, I loosen up and I am a little bit more talkative. Yeah. Uh, Dan W., he's actually from the Brute Force and Ignorance podcast, says, yes, for my table, but my players are in their late 20s and early 30s, so they can handle themselves in their drink. We don't drink to excess. We are all very close friends, so we have a few drinks to relax and, in my case, calm the nerves. They respect me as the DM, and I want them to feel as comfortable as possible when it comes to role-playing, and a few beers or glasses of wine helps us all unwind and really get into the game. It's not for everyone, but it honestly helps the whole evening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good point, uh... If you're old enough, <laughs> definitely. I, I guess. Sorry, because I am in the the twilight years of, of my <laughs> my early to mid thirties. I, uh, I I I didn't bother to specify that, but yes, right. I mean, yes, we are we are speaking of uh, legally, of course. Right. Although, I think Dan is in the UK, so that's true. The ages are a bit different for that, him. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Ivan or Ivan, I think Ivan says the party I DM, we get a few drinks during the game. We don't get drunk, but we enjoy a brew or two during the game. Sure. So yep. yeah, that's cool. Brandon B says get blitzed and belligerent with the squad. Seriously. <laughs> having a few brews opens up people a bit more. And when you're surrounded by three to five, typically shy folks, it helps. No good event started with hold my glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I want to make a yeah. character that does that says that though. <laughs> That's pretty good. Excuse me, hold my glass of water. Yep. And then <laughs> uh, proceeds to start a bar fight. Yep. Over on uh, Discord, Holy Blade seven 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 says absolutely yes, but there are conditions on this. If it's going to disrupt the game, or if anyone there has reasons they don't want to be around or might be uncomfortable, then don't. Right. However, one of my best game sessions was when I had a rough day. Then I started the game off with a shot. They still make jokes about that session and claim it was the best one. <laughs> um, oh, that's sketchy. Says, usually, yes, since we're pretty much always recording, because she's from uh, Adventures in Aurelia. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much always ex recording when I play. It helps us get over the nerves of role playing. Right. We've had some iconic moments that were the result of probably too much Prosecco. <laughs> And then which one's Prosecco? Is that the lemon one? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. You're asking the wrong Sorry. person. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Jason, who is a good friend of ours oh, yeah. that recently uh, joined the Discord. Yeah. And uh, he we've mentioned him, Jay, many, many times. Mm -hmm. uh, he chimed in. He said, I've had the alcohol before or during a game go great and not great. Mm. The great was one group who always just drank a glass of bourbon or a beer before the session while we were catching up, and it really loosened us up and made the role-playing better. The bad was a pirate campaign where the players brought a big cask of rum every game. We would be so trashed by the end of the session, we wouldn't remember what had happened, and the game eventually dissolved. Oh, no. Well, there you go. <laughs> Jay gives us uh, both, both of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man yeah too much and just enough yeah i guess so uh preston penguin r says during but never enough to get drunk when i'm a player maybe beer and whiskey is best mm. peace Roy pancake says i don't really mind either way and others but personally i don't drink our sessions are usually accompanied by various forms of soda and at least one tea and or coffee break works for us and then they i think they got into a bit of a discussion about tea after that point. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it deviated a little bit over on Reddit. Who's your trip says I never drink in DM when I do. I always have a designated druid. Uh... And uh, Stiltskin Koopo 84 says some people might feel the need to loosen up to role play more fluidly, but I don't. I think of it as a point of pride that when I can come up with some wacky stuff, just being me sober. If I had drink during the game, it would likely be a sweet wine paired with some festive type holiday food or dessert. Yeah. I am that holiday only super sweet wine snob. <laughs> and dessert wines are really good, though. They're, they're usually more potent, too, actually. Oh, yeah. 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 Then over on Twitter, uh, Collins B says, much to the surprise of people I've played with, I don't drink, period. I already have a hard enough time focusing and not going off the rails as it is. I never want to know what drunk Collins looks like. <laughs> and. Honestly, that's that's me too. Like you know, I don't drink, and I'm I'm afraid of what I would be like if I if I was. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Uh, Jason S says, "Tough one." Admittedly, I usually imbibe before and during, but the key is not to go too far for right. me anyway. Yeah. 
And then uh, T, the beverage, right uh, after the Discord uh, discussion, <laughs> hopped over on Twitter and said, only if airing on the light side of moderation. Sure. So, so there you go. Mm-hmm. So got got a bunch of uh, plenty of people on both both sides, but I think uh, generally speaking, most people are are pro alcohol during or before a session. And yeah, that's fine. Hey, whatever works. Uh, whatever works yeah. for you guys. Because you know, like it 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 does kind of help. You know, in moderation, it does kind of help loosen you up a bit. You yeah, know, that sort of thing. Um, all right. So next week's social media question is favorite school of magic. Mm. Do you have one? I mean, I, I think I know what your answer is, but I want to say I want to say necromancy. Oh, I think that's the way to go. Whoa, seriously. What did you think mine was? I thought it was going to be transmutation. I mean, yeah, that's I feel like that's another. Yeah, that's for some reason in my mind, transmutation and the color green go <laughs> hand in hand. I well, I mean, transmutation, I will say, is definitely like it, it has been my favorite. OK, here's actually why I always think of you as going to transmutation, because a long time ago we were going to be playing an Eberron campaign. Right. Jay was going to be running. Uh, Jason, who was on Discord. And uh, and go check out our Discord. <laughs> and you, we each spontaneously, like none of us. Right. Yes. Told each other this, but we all ended up choosing different specialist wizards. Right. I was a cleric necromancer. Steve was like uh Something oh, enchanter. Oh, this was going to be the G- Gestalt one, wasn't it? It was a Gestalt one. No, sorry. It was St- Jay was going to be a Beguiler enchanter. Steve was going to be an illusionist, something else. And then you were a uh, an artificer, artificer transmuter. transmuter. Yeah. And you were a Warforged. Too. A Warforged Arch- artificer. artificer transmuter. Yeah. Well, because like, I really like I really like um, the show uh, Full Metal Alchemist. And oh, so, yeah. Like, yeah. They're, it's tr- they do transmutations and stuff like that. And like, yeah. it's cause it's very sciencey magic and I sure, like sure. sciencey magic. So, but like necromancy is also sciencey magic okay, in a okay. way. Uh, so I, yeah, I feel like, I feel like more later, more, more recently necromancy, but, but transmutation was definitely up there. And sure. then, um, I was, I was going to jokingly say like <laughs> divination, <laughs> but divination's cool now. Divin- yeah. Divination's not bad, especially yeah. fifth edition is pretty good. Yeah. But what about you? I should have come up with a good answer. I don't really have a good answer. Probably Conjuration. Mm. I really like the idea of just being able to just like poof, you got something yeah, in yeah, your hand. For sure. Evocation is fun, but I would never say it's my favorite because like it gets, it's boring. It's just blow stuff up. Yeah, that's true. It's like, But I mean, blowing stuff up is it's what you need sometimes. It's like it's like saying cheese is your favorite topping on a pizza. It's like, yeah, well, like, yeah. yeah, but cheese you're you're gonna have you're everyone's gonna have cheese on a pizza sure in most cases um so like yeah so it's like evocation unless you're just like really into fireballs or something like that which is fine um i also like teleportation stuff and if i'm not mistaken that has always been it is always conjuration i believe so because conjuration is you think of it as like making something out of nothing but in D D terms yeah that's not what it is it is moving things from one place to another right whenever you conjure something you are actually bringing it from somewhere else right yeah. so like when you summon monster you are summoning a monster from another plane mm-hmm. to here when you create an object you're making that object out of like material from one of the elemental planes or something yeah so so teleportation would mm. fit fit in the same way so yeah i think i think conjuration is probably my favorite I feel like there's like some form of teleportation spell that was under transmutation. I think. Oh, maybe there there, there was like a couple that you're are a transforming weird. some a person from being a person that's right here to being a person that's over there. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I feel like there are like some spells that like have you know aspects of one school, but they're actually another. Or something sure, like sure. That. And they they are the the noteworthy uh, exception. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm interested in seeing what uh, what some of our listeners have to say about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll do it for all of our questions for today. But before we close out, let's uh, wind down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe have a little drink oh. for people who drink. <laughs> so we are going to uh, let's relax. We're going to remember those who have come before us, who have maybe given their lives, so we may have a safer world to live in as we toss another log onto the funeral pyre. Today's funeral pyre story was submitted by Adam B. via Discord. And this has a title. The title is The Moonlight King's Revenge. Ooh. 
The party has entered the Feywild to track down and persuade the Fey Lord, known as the Moonlight King, to stop harassing the Druid's family and home. Upon entering the castle of the Moonlight King, the Druid instantly realized something wasn't right. They proceeded slowly into the entrance hall, whereupon the floor parted and walls of force separated the parted randomly, rolling a d12 to see who ended up where. Hmm. The group was mostly separated, with only a few people with a fellow party member. Forced to delve deeper to find a way to reunite the party, they soon discovered the maze-like structure and random monsters and traps of the dungeon. Eventually, they happened upon doors to another room. Upon entering, they faced off against evil clone versions of their party and ex-party members. Yeah. Unfortunately for the dwarf cleric fighter, Mac Starmouth, this resulted in him facing the party's ex-companion, the high elf gunsmith, who proceeded to crit four shots in a row and kill him outright before he could bring his axe to bear. Oh no. I will note this was a great way to introduce a little PvP with the players playing both themselves and their evil counterparts. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that is actually, if, if you are going to do something like that, this is the kind of thing to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Adam B. Let's raise a glass to Max Starmouth, who was not quick enough on the draw. Clink. Clink. All right. Well, that'll do it for today. To submit questions for us to discuss, items for the Dragon's Horde, or stories for the Funeral Pyre, please email us at interpartyconflict at gmail.com. For show notes, links to media mentioned on the show, and running lists of questions and magic items, go to interpartyconflict.com. Join the discussion on social media. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash interpartyconflict, on Reddit at r slash interpartyconflict, on our interparty Discord, or on Twitter at inpartyconflict for our weekly social media questions. Your answers might end up on the show. Find us on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, YouTube, anywhere you download podcasts. Please rate, review, subscribe, or just tell a friend. If you'd like to support the show, check out the rewards at patreon.com slash interpartyconflict. There's a few different tiers, so anything you can spare, even a dollar a month, would go towards making the show better, and you'll get bonus content for it. Jeff, tell us about FriendQuest. FriendQuest is our YouTube channel where we play video games. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Griff is very excited to get to like 50 <laughs> subscribers. I think he wants to do something special for that it. W- so. That would be pretty cool. So yeah, so c- come uh, come join us on the, over there. Awesome. And speaking of video games, I forgot to mention this at the very beginning of the show. I just put up the latest episode of my side project, the Arcade Memories podcast. I just put up an episode a few days ago, and uh, the stories in this one are a bit longer than they usually are, which mm. is pretty good. I like when I get like the the nice meaty stories because when I people submit them online, it's like oh, it's like one sentence. And I was like, sure. Okay. I mean, I I can use that, but right, it'd yeah. be better if it was you know. Yeah, you want longer. it meaty enough to to be good on a pizza. <laughs> there you go. Um, and also one of the people that submitted was one of the um. One of the frequent players on the film reroll. Oh, fact. nice! So I, they mentioned he mentioned something about knowing what arcade games would be in an arcade in the movie Goonies because they were doing the movie Goonies. Oh, sure. And so I sent him a, I sent him a, I tweeted at him actually, and yeah, he sent me a, sent me a story. So that's cool. in there, Scott, Scott Aiello, for anybody who has listened to uh, the film reroll. So yeah, check out my side project, the Arcade Memories podcast. If you'd like to submit your own childhood memories of going to the arcade. Record them or write them to me at arcadememoriespodcast at gmail.com. Also, head over to bit.ly slash interbodyconflict to take a short survey about our show. What you like, what you don't like, etc. And just for taking it, you'll get two free printable board games courtesy of Mary and Tom over at hollandspiel.com. And our music is made by Boxcat Games from Nameless the Hackers RPG. So, Jeff, until next time, friends don't let friends druid drunk. There you go.